All right, in this short video, we're going to give you a quick tour of the SAPSPY web app. The SAPSPY system uses a web application, which is simply a web page that you log into. This is a mobile first or mobile friendly web page. What's the benefit of a web app is that you can um, access it from any iPhone, Android, or even a desktop PC, really anywhere with a web browser. So I'll simply go to sapspyapp.com. I can then use my credentials to sign in. Once I'm signed in, it will remember who I am. And normally I can just open my Safari web browser, save it as a favorite, and or access that favorite, and I'm and immediately brought to the home page. This uh, dashboard page is where all your devices will be listed. If you have just a, the sensor hub to start, it'll be one device that you see here on top. If you have multiple devices, you can simply scroll down and see all of your devices in different trigger bushes. This, this location here will list the last three readings of temperature, tank level, and vacuum level. And most, uh, most typically, this is every five minutes, these readings will be there. I can also quickly see the battery charge in the upper right, um, and even estimated gallons of how, how much sap is in that tank. Two most common places to go is first is the settings page. So I'm gonna go to settings. The first thing we can do here is give our device a, a name. This is just a display name on the dashboard. So here I'm just gonna call it trigger bush number one. Um, the, next, uh, the next setting here is the display order. So back on that dashboard page, if I had multiple devices, I can change which one do I wanna display first, second, third, and, and so forth. I'm going to leave this as the first one on the on the list. The next setting here is whether the device is powered by USB or 12 volt DC. Um, unless you are using a solar panel, you should leave it on USB or 12 volt DC. If you're using a solar panel, the charge settings for that battery is optimized for a solar panel. But we only want to use that setting if you if you're physically using that six volt solar panel. That's um, as an option for the Satisfy system. All right, in this next area we want to talk about is the mode of operation. There is a several modes of operation, whether it's always on, sleep, sleep with cellular on, normal mode, cold weather deep sleep, or even burst mode. These all give you a different uh, frequency of readings, allows, allows you to conserve or bu budget the battery. That is if you don't have a constant power on the device. If you have power where your sensor hub is located, you might as well just leave it in either always on, or if you need, you can go to burst mode. The majority of these other settings allows you to budget your battery based on how frequently you, you want readings. We'll now talk about these in detail. Always on is exactly what, you, what, um, what it sounds like. It's the device is always on, always connected. Um, you can take readings on demand. And in this always on mode, it'll take readings every five minutes and publish that information up to the cloud. To make it accessible on your uh, from the web app. The next mode is sleep with cellular on. This is very similar to always on, except it's you know the analogy I'd use is like your cell phone where you turn the screen off. You can still make and receive phone calls, uh, but it does still consume uh, battery. In that sleep with cellular on, you'll still uh, be able to take readings on demand. The device will send readings out every five minutes. Just conserves a little bit of battery being with sleep with cellular on. Uh, as far as expected battery life, always on, you'll get about you know seven to ten days. Sleep with cellular on, you should get uh, about ten to twelve days. So it just extends that battery life a little bit more. The next mode I call normal mode. Um, this is effectively when the sap is running okay, or maybe uh, your your system is running properly. In this normal mode, the device will sleep and wake up sleep and wake up it'll uh, take readings every five minutes and then every 20 minutes public, um, once it wakes up it'll turn on the cellular connection connect to the cell tower and publish all that information out effectively you get a data point every five minutes and then the, the page um, uh, you know it gets refreshed every 20 minutes it's an okay mode when it's um, you know sap is running okay or maybe it's a uh, it's cold at night just to conserve that battery a little bit more. In that normal mode, it'll it, the system should last two to four weeks in that normal mode setting. The next setting is cold weather deep sleep. 
Very similar to normal mode, just a slower pace. So in cold weather deep sleep, it'll take readings every, every uh, 20 minutes and then publish that information every two hours. This is a good mode to enter when you have two or three days or even a week uh, freeze up in the sugar bush. That way it consumes very little battery life. In cold weather deep sleep, the device will last even six to seven months. Finally, new for 2022 is what was referred to as burst mode. Burst mode is, uh, allows you to take one, or the system will take uh, uh, readings every minute for up to one hour. So we can enter uh, burst mode. It'll then start publishing data every minute for the next one hour. It's a great setting to enter when you're checking leaks, uh, tweaking your system, or going through any issues. It'll automatically take itself out of burst mode after that one hour. All right, the next area here is, is referred to as device control. So as long as the device is, is on and is connected to, the, um, connected to the cloud, connected to the cell tower, we can use the device control um, area. This is effectively talking to the device, telling it to take a reading. So in this case, I can say read temperature. I can say read vacuum, read tank level, is the device powered? Um, these are all on-demand readings. I can smash this button all day long if I'd like and take readings on demand. When you do uh, read temperature, read vacuum, read tank, or is powered, it's just an instantaneous reading. It'll just show up on this, on this screen here. If you want to save, um, save the readings um, to the dashboard and to the plots, you can use take readings. And then it's going to um, take, you know, read the temperature, read the vacuum, read the tank level, determine if it's powered or not, and then save that information um, to the database. That makes it available from the trends or the dashboard page. Uh, take vitals is the, um, it's going to update the battery charge, the battery state, and the signal strength. So if I do take, take vitals, uh, for, as for, at least for now, what we have to do is hit take vitals, I refresh the page, then that information is updated. So if you just plugged in your device to start charging, just to make sure it's charging, I could do take vitals and then just refresh the page and then see what the update is. Uh, if, if you do, uh, or if you um, decided to go with the relay on off control, this is right where you turn, you can manually turn that relay on and off. So in this case, I can click relay on or relay off. And then you get feedback if the device, um, you know, received that command and, and, and responded appropriately. That is the device control area. All right, now let's go through the text alert settings. Uh, so here, in its current configuration, we can set up text alerts for loss of power, low battery, low vacuum, or full tank level. You can use the, the on-off button there just to turn alerts on and off for that specific setting. Or if you, and then you can use the slider to set the alert for what, um, at what threshold you want to receive those alerts. So I'm going to turn them all on and then I'll set them appropriately for what I, what I want to see my, uh, receive a text alert for. One impor important note is the, um, the text alert is sent once it goes from the good condition, in this case above 20, 20 inches of mercury, and once it falls into the red condition, you'll receive one text alert. So for example, the end of the sugaring day, when you turn your, uh, turn your vacuum pump off, you'll receive one text alert once it falls below 20 inches. Um, you won't receive, continually receive text alerts. It, the system will then rearm itself once that vacuum is above 20 inches again. So it's every transition from a good reading into the red zone where you receive that text alert. Same thing for a full tank level. Once it gets above 83%, you receive a single text alert for that condition. To, to configure your phone number uh, for text alert settings, we'll come over to the user preferences. Scroll down under user preferences, and there's the, the you know, you can configure up to three phone numbers that for any uh, alert condition, it'll send it out to it, it, um, any three phone numbers. And you always enter your number, you know, no zero or uh, no, no, um, no leading digit, no brackets, just enter the number straight like, that, you know, straight like you see there, the 10 digit number. From here, we can jump back to dashboard, let's go back to settings, 
one important note I wanted to also um, cover is once you're done doing alert settings, once you set any of these settings here, whether it's text alert settings, um, display order, mode, we always want to come to the bottom and click Save Settings. That's how you just confirm that saves that information to the, uh, to the database. And that's a quick overview of t the text alert settings. All right, the next area to come to is you can go to the Plot Data uh, button. And so plot your data um, by, by default every 12 hours, or it defaults to 12 hours. But you can do one hour up to even 14 days and plot your data over time. You'll see vacuum, tank level, temperature, and the battery charge here, all on that same page. If I hold my finger on the screen, I can, I can drag it left and right to, um, to, so, to see different vacuum readings earlier in the day. If you have um, uh, you know, maybe a dual port vacuum sensor, I can turn one port and just see one at a time. Um, and I can always change what my display range is up here on the left hand and the right hand side as well. Uh, for tank level, we have a couple um, different features for tank level. So here in particular, I can see just the raw, um, which is just the, the raw data coming from the sensor. I can do a little bit of filtering on that. We can do filtered and average, and then we even can do predicted. Predicted is that future tank level, um, or what that future tank level will be based on the current rate of change. And you can turn any of those on and off, all just by clicking, clicking the buttons. Next area is temperature, where I can see the highs and the lows. Um, you can see where the current temperature is in the sugar bush. And finally, the battery charge. The, uh, the, the green and red um, bars on, on, these, on the tank level and vacuum level represent what the text alert settings are. So then you can get a visualization of what's a, you know, based on your alert settings, is it in the uh, red or green area. And that's the simple plotting. If I want to change different, a different period of time, I can just select those different periods of time as well. To go back to the dashboard, I can always just click the dashboard button on the upper left-hand side. And the final area to go to for on the satisfied um, web app is user preferences. So in the hamburger menu, you can do log out, you can change password, user preferences, or you can always review our privacy policy or terms of service. Here, what, the most common place I'll go is user preferences. Here you can uh, set your you know, business name. Here I'm just gonna do SASPY. Uh, first name is SAP, last name is SPY. Um, you can set your temperature units. So whether you wanna see your temperature in degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius, you can set that right there. Um, your display your display mode. Um, so I typically will select relative time, just my personal preference or absolute time. So let's back on the dashboard page. If it'll say it was two minutes ago, five minutes ago, or will it tell me it was 10.30 PM? So um, you can select between relative time or absolute time. So just to show that, I'm gonna change this to absolute time. I'll save settings and then go back to the dashboard. You notice now it says, you know, February 25th, 11.05 PM. If I change that back, go user preferences. If I change uh, that back to relative time, it is now three minutes ago, eight minutes ago, 12 minutes ago. So just really personal preference, which, uh, which mode you wanna be in. Uh, and then we covered alert settings. You can enter your phone number for different text alerts. Always go back to uh, click dashboard, and you can always go back to uh, the home page by just clicking that dashboard on the upper left hand side.